So we have two things we need to talk about before we can get into the strategic derivatives, and that is leverage and hedging. Leverage is also used as protection. Uh, the greatest example would be a farmer and his crops. He has one harvest a year. He has many liabilities and expenses throughout that year. So uh, the, the price that he gets for his crops are very important. And those commodities can be very volatile. So he uses hedging to protect himself. And uh, the, I mean, it's straight out of the series four uh, study questions. So this is as basic as it gets. Enjoy. So here's the corn chart straight from the Merck's website. Uh, these, this is about six months worth of data. These prices reflect a uh, 5,000 bushels. Uh, so let's go to Excel. So we saw the most recent price there was $387. Uh, <clears throat> the bushel is 5,000. So the price per bushel is seven dollars seventy four cents. So let's pretend just to make it a round number that this farmer has a hundred thousand bushels. So they have six hundred acres. So for a hundred thousand bushels, they'll need twenty contracts. So the expected revenue off of today's contract price would be 774000 So if we, not knowing anything about farming, if we assume that the, the lease for the equipment, the property taxes, the salaries to the employees, the maintenance costs, uh, the every single thing you can think of with a farm, it would probably be a lot, including the farmer's own salary, uh, and insurance, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we'll just assume it's 95% of today's expected revenue. All right, so the physical cash profit would be the revenue minus the cost. And the hedge costs, let's say they uh, sold it at the same price a year ago, nine months ago. Uh, now they would have to buy back the shares, resulting in uh, really a zero difference. So the total would be this minus this based on this operating budget that we just made up. The farmer has a break even point at $7.35. If we multiply that by 5,000 divided by 100, we get the uh, current contract price. So that is the farmer's break even point. Everything above that line if the if the harvest comes in above that line the farmer makes a profit if the harvest comes in the costs come in below that line if the price of corn goes below that line the farmer is in the red the farmer goes out of business the farmer loses everything so the hedging is to prevent the farmer having that kind of unnecessary pressure especially when you can see the price does range in that territory. He can't afford to sell his corn beneath that line. So let's pretend the nine months from now the price does come in and it is below the line. It's at 360. We'll drag all these down. He's Negative, well, I doubt he's going to lose his farm for being 15 under. But anyway, his hedging costs now, he would have to buy back the contracts that he originally sold for 387. 
he would have to buy them back at 360 making a profit. So the hedge was to sell the contract at the price nine months ago, which was 387. contracts minus the cost which would be the purchase price which would be the price that he made uh, today times 20 contracts the hedge profits 54,000 making the difference between the cash profit and the hedge cost or profit the exact same as when the hedge was a push so you can see the way we've hedged the yield entirely that no matter what we change no matter what the farmer gets for the cost his his uh operating budget will remain intact and his surplus will remain intact perfectly. So it will make the price uh, 300, so it's dramatically less. He still gets the same, we'll make it 500 and dramatically more and he still has the same budget. So it makes him invincible to the price of corn. If the corn price was going crazy and one of his friends said, wow, you must be really stressed under the corn, he could say, I don't care. It doesn't impact me at all. But you can see with the chart, so this would be his, the hedge that he set in the beginning of the season at 387. Everything, every time corn is above this line, the hedge loses money. And every time the price of corn is below this line, the hedge makes money. So he's got this balance perfect. Well, let's pretend the farmer's been doing this a while. He becomes an expert at selling corn. He knows uh, kind of the nuances of it. He knows where it's going to be. And he grows more comfortable with the price, with the volatility. So he's able to adjust his hedge. And he does that by maybe lessening the number of contracts he has. So actually you have this formula in your mind. You have to use cell references for this to work right. So now he realizes, let's go back to the three six, whoops. So he realizes that he can afford a $15,000 loss. So he says, instead of hedging full 20, let's just hedge 10 contracts. So now instead of earning $54,000 in profit on the hedge, he only gets 27,000, making his surplus, reducing it to 11,000. He's very comfortable with that. And now by only buying contracts on only hedging 10 contracts half of his field instead of the entire field he's able to take to capitalize more on the upsides so if it goes up to 420 here he now makes 70,000 so his surplus is even better is even greater and you can see that that's very possible for him to get that price it's at least in the range If the price goes down to 300, he now loses 50,000, but this is, again, risk he's comfortable to take, and that's a pretty extreme price. If it goes extreme the other way, he makes, he has a windfall surplus. So the hedging is able to give him some insurance against the price. At the same time, as he gets better at it, he can be more strategic with the way he uses it but he can also remove all of his risk completely depending on how he how comfortable he is and how uh, how good he is so just like the farmer hedging uh, with agricultural products you can also hedge against any commodity 
You can hedge against metals. You can hedge against currency. You can hedge against the competition. You can hedge against sectors. There's pretty much a way to hedge against any kind of market pressure. Just like the farmer is is uh, concerned about the selling of the corn, there's a flour mill that's concerned about buying corn. So there's there's pressure going both ways. There's hedging going both ways, and uh, that all works together to create capital efficiency. Just like the time value of money can help an investor uh, protect themselves against the timing of the market, uh, hedging can protect an investor against the pricing of a market. These tools will help an investor to protect themselves against movements that go against them and uh, help them capitalize and profit on movements that go with them.